Thanks for clicking on this Inland Sports video. If you're a local business or an organization and you'd like to promote here on the Inland Sports Show, just send us an email, inlandsportsshow at gmail.com. Inland Sports Show is a big weekend for CBU baseball and softball. The softball team going 5-0 in the Lancer Invitational. Then they beat Long Beach State last night. They're on a roll uh, right now. And the baseball team picked up some big wins. Three out of four against Seton Hall. Now they hit the road to open up Western Athletic Conference play. Joining us live on the show as we go inside the Lancers, it is CBU skipper Gary Adcock. And Coach, it's kind of been like the car show. We've talked to several coaches tonight. Everyone's been oh, in their no. car. Everyone's super busy. So where are you? What are you doing right now? I am in uh, uh, Edinburgh, Texas. Uh, we just got done with practice and my assistants are in Target getting, uh, you know, weekend snacks and I'm talking with you. So look at me, uh, you know, putting down the food in order to talk with you. <laughs> You know, I feel like we talk about food quite a bit because I remember way back when I was interviewing you <clears throat> about uh, Trevor Oaks and he had just made his major league debut with the Kansas City Royals. And I was like, hey, coach, you're in Kansas City, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, the barbecue's fantastic. You went like right to the food. I remember that interview. Well, yeah, when when Kaiser puts you in the obese category, there's a reason <laughs> for that. You know, when you're always talking about food. So. Yeah, no, it, that's 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 typical for me. Yeah, you know, something around a meal. <laughs> well, coach, listen, how would you kind of describe the early non-league portion of your schedule this season? Because you've had some ups, you've had some downs. You know, you had three out of four against Seton Hall, so that's good as you go into conference play. But you've had some great moments, and you've had you know six and six. I mean, well, how would you kind of describe what the the first part of this schedule has looked like for you guys, the Lancers? Well, you know, we've we've been a little bit spoiled. We've not we haven't been six and six in a long time. You know, we've been able to to start really hot. I think it was nine and zero in our first year of Division One, and ten and two last year, or something like that. So adversity early is better than adversity late. I think you can learn from that. And taking two of three at uh, National Runner Up Oklahoma was great, but you know, then we uh, we had a little rough spell in the in between, and we were just excited to be back home. I, I believe we were the last Division One team to play a home game um, when we uh, changed our series here up to El Reno and, and played in snow flurries. But that sounds like a bunch of excuses, um, and we're not an excuse program, but we are uh, we're in uncharted territory for us, you know, 500 as we enter league. You know, that's kind of ironic you, uh, that you bring that up, Coach, that here in Riverside, you know, we had the storm of the century where there was snow falling in Riverside. So you guys moved to play Nevada up in Reno and you got snow up there as well, right? We did. They just had, uh, they had turf and uh, we're more accustomed to it. So we, we played in 32 degrees and uh, some snow flurries and um, it's good for us. It's, it's all good. You know, when, when you're a league that's typically a one bid league, you're looking to be good five days in May is what we're saying. That's basically the conference tournament should you qualify and any lesson you can learn uh, to get ready for that is beneficial. But Coach Smithern used to always tell me the best lessons learned are when you win. And I couldn't agree with him more. I don't like learning those lessons when you lose, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. Coach, going back to that season opening series uh, with Oklahoma, to take that series, did that prove anything to you? Did that say anything about this year's team? Uh, you know, we just had, you know, to Oklahoma's credit, um, we just had that circled for a long time. The the four years of no playoffs, uh, no conference tournament in the sport of baseball um, was difficult to say the least. So we tried to, to schedule something that we would, people would consider us being over our skis and a place that we couldn't have success. Um, so we had been pointing to that for a while. Um, I don't know if we caught them off guard or not. They they had a big roster turnover, but I think for for a lot of people, it was validation that we are a uh, capable Division One baseball institution. I think we know that, but for other people to see that across the country um, was encouraging to alum and our current roster. 
So, Coach, as you go into your, your conference opening series this weekend, um, I know you've got a couple regular season WAC titles, but now you're eligible for the NCAA tournament this year. Can you use that, obviously, as cap Captain Obvious here, as motivation for, for this year's team um, to, to you know, punch their ticket to postseason play? You can, but it also can be a hindrance, you know, because you, you're playing freer when you when you know the result doesn't matter. And now that you know the result does matter, I, I think our goal has shifted to trying to get these guys to play relaxed and not so fixated on that uh, tournament, but just trying to play our best each day. Um, and that's a tough line um, when you know that there's something in front of you um, that's exciting um, to just stay in the moment and not look over the horizon too far. You know, Coach, I saw uh, Mike Carpentier hit a couple out over the weekend uh, against Seton Hall. He's had a big series. Who are some of the guys in your lineup or on the mound that has really, you know, stood out so far for you through the first dozen games? You know what? St statistically, we're kind of a wreck. You know, we're, we're a really high ERA and a low batting average right now, kind of muddling through it. But we've had uh, uh, Garrett Ostrander, who has never been an everyday player, hitting 400 and and really, Michael Carpentier is kind of, you know, doing everything for us offensively. Mitch Simon's putting a quiet, good year. On the mound, um, we're kind of a work in progress. Jacob Wilson and Spencer Bengard probably have been our best pitchers um, from Marietta and Moreno Valley. And we're just hoping that some other people can join along with them and um, make the strides that they're making. And finally, Coach, as you open conference play at the uh, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, um, is it exciting to be in the conference play now? Obviously, the non-league or the non-conference schedule is fun. You play some, you know, high-profile, big-brand schools, and, and that's all good. But do you feel like now that you get in the conference play, it, it, it feels a little bit more real because now there's going to be something on the line? It does, and you know, this opponent, and all, I think all of us coaches are the same. But I say this. You know, honestly, this is a dangerous opponent. They are very old. Um, they start like seven seniors and their pitching staff's old. The coach does a great job. They had 3,000 fans at a game the other night versus Houston. It's a tough environment to play in. It's windy. Um, I would prefer us not start out here, but, you know, um, you don't get to choose your conference schedule. So, you know, hopefully we survive this test. We're back to back weeks in Texas. So we come back here again next week. So of our first five weekends of the year, four are on the road. So we're really going to find out about our toughness uh, at the end of these first five weeks. All right, Coach, one more question. This is the final one. So you got your coaching staff running around picking up snacks right now. What, what's your yep. go-to snack? Is there something that when they get out of the car, you're like, hey, guys, don't forget the mini blueberry muffins or whatever. Is there, what's your go-to <laughs> You know, we have a four man coaching staff and two of them are really in to their, uh, their, their health. So two of them, I heard on the way out, say, get a bunch of waters. And then you have coach Brasington and myself who are more on the lines of, you know, pastries and chips and things like that. So <laughs> hopefully our wives aren't listening to your broadcast because we're the older two and the younger two are more into the healthy stuff. <laughs> it balances out, you know, perfectly. It balances yeah. out. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if I've drank in a bottle of water in 10 years. So yeah, that's kind of <laughs> sad, but, uh, but yeah, no, we're, we're expecting 98 degrees that it's going to be, it's going to be a little hotter than it's been in Riverside. So you, you leave the snow of, of Reno, and it was actually a cold weekend here in Riverside, too, uh, playing those night games, and now you go to Texas where you, you're almost triple digits, which is crazy. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then, like I told you, it must be a slow news day if you want us on here. <laughs> you got to get on my Riverside Poly Bears. Like They're like 6-1 and one in baseball or something like that. I mean, come on, pick somebody a little bit more entertaining than the 6-6 six and six Lancers. Let's get let's get uh, Coach Ermert on there. I'm writing that down right now. Riverside, Polly Bears, Coach Ermert. He's my yeah, boy. No, I, I don't know if that's if that's something illegal, and now I'm in trouble with compliance. <laughs> but that is the alma mater. So you know you're always rooting for the alma mater. Although uh, there's really good baseball in the in the city this year. It it's going to be exciting to watch uh, 
all those teams play. Yeah, we, we've had King on. Um, I know Arlington's loaded again. Arlington's had such a great run the last couple of years, and, and Pauly's off to a great start, too. So, yeah, the city of Riverside uh, has some really good baseball teams. But, yeah, Coach Ermer at Pauly, he's my boy. I'm going to reach out to him because they are off to a good all right. start. Deal, yeah. All right, Sounds Coach good. Adcock, good luck this weekend opening a whack play at RGV, Rio Grande Valley. Thank you so much, Coach. Enjoy the snacks. Yeah, no, the healthy eating starts now. It starts now. <laughs> when you interview me next year at this same time, it'll be a totally different me. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. <laughs> All right. That is Gary Adcock, the skipper for CBU Baseball here on the Inland Sports Show as we go inside the Lancers. Oh, man, he's such a good dude. Great baseball guy. Also funny. Great personality as well. Thank you so much, Coach. Really do appreciate it.